we're going to be talking about the deferred sales trust and i'm going to be i'm also going to be sharing a screen as well and with a little mini presentation here but as we go i want it to be interactive so feel free to to jump in and and, and chat and um, and dive into this uh all things deferred sales trust so I call this uh, the number one, I guess, I think biggest secret for commercial real estate agents and brokers to know, or any owners of highly appreciated cryptocurrency or businesses. Um, and and for those, especially in the profession of helping people defer capital gains taxes, um, and it's the number one secret to overcoming the biggest objection to a deferred sales trust, how I helped Steve, who's a client of mine, when I helped him sell his multifamily property in Sacramento, for $1.7 million and help him defer $350,000 while saving his 1031 exchange. And for those who don't uh, know me, uh, I'm here in Sacramento, California. Um, I'm the founder of Capital Gains Tax Solutions. I'm also um, proud to be a part of EXP Commercial as a multifamily broker in Sacramento. And so, and thank you, um, thank you, Linda, for the kind words. And also, Stephanie, thank you as well. Um, but as a quick, um, quick little um, legal disclaimer, I'm not a CPA nor a tax attorney. I'm a humble commercial real estate broker who had the had the um, had the fortunate opportunity to meet uh, an amazing tax attorney and another business partner back in 2009 um, to learn about this deferred sales trust. So I, I strongly encourage everybody to seek individual um, advice and, and and bring in your professionals to make sure that that what we're saying and what what we're doing is a good fit for you. And so I want to start with a couple facts for everybody. And it's really interesting to consider that the American Bankers Association did a study. And they did this study and they found that there's about 17 to 20 trillion dollars that's going to pass from one generation to the next in the next 20 years. And this is known as the largest wealth transfer in the history of the planet. And if you think about that, it's pretty staggering, right? To think about there's never been more wealth transferred from one generation to the next generation that we know of ever in the history of the world. Okay. And so this is the largest, largest wealth transfer ever. In fact, there's about 77 million baby boomers. And that's the generation that's going to be passing the wealth to the millennials mainly. Um, that are in the U.S. alone, and every single day about 10,000 are returning 65, right? And they they own a lot of highly appreciated businesses, commercial real estate, high-end primary homes. And some of these things are a little bit more um, complicated than they used to be 10 or 20 years ago as far as owning real estate and rent control and challenges with, with financing and different things that can just kind of be a headache. In fact, most of my clients, when they meet me, they say, you know what, Brett, I've been waiting I've been waiting to find a solution before I sold. And now that I have this clear way out to defer the capital gains tax, which is about 30 to 50% in capital gains tax and depreciation recapture, depending on what state you're in. Now I'm ready to sell. Now I'm ready to list and sell the property. In fact, I have two listings right now, one in, um, in Los Angeles, which is kind of a cool story. This um, client friend and now EXP uh, agent, um, it, I called the uh, you know, three for one deal. He not only called me about the Deferred Sales Trust, but then he joined EXP and then we've co-listed his multifamily property down in Los Angeles. He goes, Brett, I've been waiting for this. I'm moving out of California, I'm moving to Miami and I'm selling my house, I'm selling my apartment complexes, but I wasn't gonna do it until I had a tax way, a way to defer the tax. I'm tired of the 1031. And even if I found a deal that made sense, it's a very challenging to find that in 45180. I don't necessarily want toilets, trash and liability right now. And so, as well, the 1031 exchange, one of the challenges with that is it's not eligible for public or private stock or cryptocurrency or primary homes or business sales. And so there's there's individuals who want to sell right now. And if you're listening to this, you may want to sell and you might want to invest into real estate or, or businesses, but you're not sure how to do that without without paying huge capital gains tax. And so um, that is really the, uh, the the premise of this whole thing that we're trying to solve for, which is you or your clients are reluctant to sell because of the capital gains tax. Again, it's 30 to 50% of the gain. In fact, Biden, propo Biden proposal right now in the administration is proposing to take it federal from 20 to 25, 26, or 28, which means it's not only going to be 30 to 50, it's going to be 35 to 55 or 36 to 56. It's huge, okay? So every single day, high net worth individuals, primary homeowners, cryptocurrency owners, stock and investment real estate owners, they pay hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars in capital gains tax when they don't have to and they feel trapped. And a few things um, as we get into this conversation a little bit more, it's okay to dream of helping your clients defer millions in tax and becoming the number one in your profession. To unlock value in a way that's transformational. To do things that are more like a Netflix way of trading real estate or trading cryptocurrency versus Blockbuster. 
And I believe it's more important than ever to unlock new deals, new value, and be in the business of solving your clients' problems than ever before. Because the stakes are so high given all of the wealth that's going to transfer. And it's either going to transfer um, and they're going to sell and pay tax. Um, or it's going to transfer potentially and still have the stepped up basis, which for sure real estate could be a good thing. And or you can unlock deals right now and help people have what they want, which is time and freedom to invest and do the things they want to do. So who is this presentation for? Who is the Deferred Sales Trust for? Well, it's for anyone and or yourself and or your client that has a highly appreciated business, investment real estate, has a failing 1031 exchange, primary home that's trying to sell stock, public or private, private cryptocurrency, or other assets subject to capital gains tax worth at least a million dollars net of all debt. And the asset has more than at least a million dollars of gain. And by the way, what is a deferred sales trust, right? Is this thing a Delaware statutory trust? I think I've heard of a DST. No, it's not a Delaware statutory trust. In fact, Delaware statutory trust are part of the blockbuster old way of doing things. And um, the deferred sales trust is the new way. A deferred sales trust is just a manufactured installment sale. Well, Brett, what's an installment sale? Well, it's based upon IRC 453, which is a tax code that goes back to the 1920s, where you can carry paper. So if Stephanie were selling her $10 million mobile home park right now that she's owned for 30 years and has no basis remaining and she lived in California, guess what? It's going to be somewhere around 40% of that uh, that gain is going to be taxed, $4 million. But instead of, instead of just selling it and paying the tax, she can carry paper. She can, she can do like a land contract or seller carry back. And when she carries back paper, she doesn't pay tax on what she hasn't received yet. So hypothetically, if she were to sell to Linda for a dollar down payment and carry back all the diff all the rest of it, guess what? Stephanie's only paying tax on a dollar until she receives the rest of it. And that's exactly what we're doing with the trust, except we're saying, hey, Linda, come with the full 10 million. And we're going to ask, we're going to ask Stephanie um, to form a trust and sell to the trust. And, us, and the trust is going to sell it to, to Linda. And it's like a three party transaction. And when we do it in the order that we've, we've done for, uh, with the tax attorneys collectively with the business partners for 25 years, thousands of closes, billions under management, we follow all the rules. What happens is Stephanie ends up with a promissory note of the trust to pay her back over time slowly and pay tax slowly. And, Linda gets the property like she always thought she would and does. Everything's the same. And it's in a tax deferral state. And that's where this amazing thing happens where you can buy real estate whenever you want by partnering with the trust. You can put it in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. We don't have any like-kind requirements. I don't know if you remember going to a, a blockbuster and maybe Stephanie or Linda, um, if you want to participate here, I'm going to call on you here. If you raise your hand or just jump right in. But do you remember going to a blockbuster on a random Friday night? Linda, do you remember that? And you wanted to get that movie? And that movie is behind that cardboard box, right? And do you can you imagine yourself? You're walking in and you see it across the aisle, and you're excited because you know you, you that was your mission to go there and get that movie. And maybe you drove through the snow, you had to park, you had to get in there, you had to fight the crowd, right? And but you saw the movie, and it's behind that cardboard box, and you're excited. But right before you get there, did you ever that moment where someone's two steps ahead of you and they walk and they grab that movie? Do you remember that? But even if you got that movie. Do you remember having to take it home and having to rewind it and you're frustrated because the person before you didn't rewind it? <laughs> okay. What about returning it within three days, right? You had to get it back. And if you didn't return, it, you got the little penalty, right? And then you're frustrated. Or if you get the re rewind penalty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's dusting off the cobwebs, right? Mm -hmm. So that is what the 1031 is like. It's the blockbuster way of doing things, right? You have 45 days to identify, 180 days to close. And it also, it's like kind. It must be the, the same type of investment property. Now, I'm a commercial real estate lover. Okay, I grew up in the business with my mom and my dad building custom homes and have rentals all my life. I, I live and breathe commercial real estate, cash flow, value add, especially multifamily, senior housing, assisted living, mobile home parks. That's like my, I, I love it. But I what I don't love is having my clients or myself feel pressured to overpay and have a seller 
have all of the leverage because they know we're in a 1031 exchange. And that's and that's that's the problem with the Blockbuster 1031 at times. And that you're trying to find a needle in a haystack. And if you don't find that deal, or even if you find the deal, you have to overpay and you have to chase. And that's kind of what, what was going on in the 2006 marketplace. And we're going to talk about that here in a minute. Whereas the Deferred Sales Trust, guess what? It's seamless. There's no like kind requirement. There's no equal or greater value requirement. There's no 45 days. There's no 180. Okay, you can put it into stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, passive or active, business ventures, cryptocurrency. Okay, and likewise, you can trade all of those assets and put it into real estate all through the trust. So it's seamless. You know, it's never checked out, right? You don't, you, there's always, you know, some ongoing monthly fees, right? Or yearly fees that we have it. So there are some complexities there, right? Which we'll work through here. But you can do the things that we've always wanted to do, which our parents taught us to do, sell high and buy low not sell high and buy 180 days later. And I'll tell you the one story that actually created the vision and the motivation to start the company. It was a story back in 2006. And my business partner, I, and this is before I even knew about the Deferred Sales Trust, okay? So I'm in 2009, 10, 11, I'm learning about the thing. And, but he tells me this story about a gentleman that he helped. And this gentleman, my business partner, is the co-founder of the Deferred Sales Trust. And he goes, Brett, this gentleman was selling a property in Minnesota. And the property value is about 20 million. It's really close to the Minnesota Viking Stadium. And this guy prints, prints money when it comes to commercial real estate. This guy hates the stock market. And he is looking at a huge capital gains tax liability bill. But he also is looking in the future and he's realizing that the marketplace doesn't look so great. In fact, it doesn't look favorable for, for him to be a buyer. He doesn't want a 1031 and overpay. So what does he do? Well, he sells. He defers, uh, instead of selling and paying the tax, he sells and he defers the, the money into the trust. And then five years later, he goes back and he buys real estate at a discount, all tax deferred. And when I heard that, when I was at Marcus and Milich, I would say, no, 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 no. We're the Navy SEALs of, of real estate in 1031s. You can't do that. We can't, no, 1031, you're right, you can't do that. But the Deferred Sales Trust, you can. And that's why it's Netflix versus Blockbuster. So I'm going to keep going here. So um, I'm going to talk about my goal for today. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Yep. Great question. Yep. But, mm -hmm. Yep. So it's your money. The money's owed to you. So what you did is you became a lender. So what happened in this scenario? Instead of taking all of the capital, right, and paying tax on that, triggering the tax, um, you can lend the funds to the trust in exchange for a promise of the trust to pay you back over time. That is what's happening. We're trading ownership for, I call it uh, being a lender, right? Being a, it is what you're doing. You're just doing a seller carry back with the trust. It's kind of like an IRA. It's kind of like a 401k. It's kind of like a long-term 1031. The difference is it, it's kind of like a self-directed IRA. It's kind of like the self-directed 401k. It's kind of like a lot of things, but the, the main thing is it's, uh, it's used for highly appreciated, at least $1 million net proceeds, $1 million gain, okay, is the key. We have to have that minimum or two assets or more that are 500 each in a short period of time to make, make it make sense for the, for the numbers. But it's kind of like a lot of things, but I want you to know that you're a lender, but then you can become an owner again by buying real estate with the trust, which is the most powerful thing. So as a, as a quick background, I, I touched on Marcus and Millichap as my background, uh, but I've also closed countless 1031 exchanges. I've also closed Delaware Statutory Trust. And I've also, of course, closed Deferred Sales Trust. And I've held my Series 22 and 63 license. And... Um, but it wasn't always that way. I've been featured on a bunch of media, like, like with Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank and a bunch of other cool stuff. And I'm coming out with a book that he's going to be a part of. Really cool. But it wasn't always that way. Like literally, I started at Marcus and Millichap in 2006. And I wasn't the guy just cold calling and closing people. Like I was the guy in the back kind of scratching my head trying to figure out this whole 
business of commercial real estate and it's a hundred percent sink or swim. It's, it's just grueling, but I fell in love with it and I fell in love with the discipline and the co competition and the solving problems and serving people on a high level. And I wanted to make in the business and I'm getting some momentum. I'm learning, I'm growing. And then the whole market completely falls apart in 2008. And I went from making a little bit of money to like nothing overnight. And I don't know if you've ever been so scared, you're not sure what you're going to do, but that's where I was. And my wife and I, baby, um, on the way, trying to figure this whole thing out. So I did what every good entrepreneur does. I get a side job hustle, start working 70 hour weeks, working at Cheesecake Factory by nighttime at a restaurant. And by day, I'd make cold calls. But while I was going through my financial struggles and challenges, my clients were too on a different level. You see, they had built their wealth for 10, 20, 30 years. And now they had done some 1031 exchanges. Some of them had too much debt, not enough liquidity, and they had to negotiate with the banks. Some lost half, some lost all over the next three year period. And that's where we said, there's got to be a better way. And that's when we figured out the deferred sales trust. And that's where my business started to grow as they started to add value in new ways that was more like Netflix versus Blockbuster. And now I'm uh, married, five kids. And now I just coach and train CPAs, commercial brokers. And I sell real estate for those who are using the deferred sales trust or recommend them to an amazing commercial broker. Um, and we're, we're, we're doing that um, every day. And so um, I'm going to pause there before I dive into the next part. Are there any questions right now before I dive into some more details here. Yeah. So our fees are about 1.5% on a one-time basis to the tax attorney. That's a one-time fee. And then um, then the, the ongoing trustee and financial advising fee are, 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 are about 1.8 to 2% per year, depending on the AUM. So let's just take a million dollar deal. Okay. And this is why we have the minimum because the pain's got to be big enough to offset, to offset the gain in order to pay for our fees. So if you had a million dollar deal at a zero basis and you had a, a million dollar net proceed and a million dollar gain, you're looking at about 30 to 40%, right? So let's just call it $300,000. And the government says you owe us that money, but you can defer it as long as you keep it as the deferred sales trust and you keep it invested into businesses. And, and so that's the idea to use the time value of money to make money on what you would have paid in tax. And our goal is to earn a certain amount, which is typically about 8%, not a guarantee, not a promise over a 10 year period to not only pay for our fees, but also justify the deal. So it's just, it's just scale and it's just the numbers. And that's how, that's how that works. Does that make sense, Linda? Yep. You're welcome. You're welcome. So if you've been struggling, this is probably why I talked about the perfect storm with the baby boomers, right? And, and, and also there's a perfect storm with cryptocurrency owners right now who are looking at such a high amount of appreciation in a short period of time and a huge amount of, of gain and a huge amount of tax if they don't have a good exit strategy. And there's, it's, not, it's not your fault. Your CPA doesn't know about this. Most Here's the big secret. Most 1031 companies, they don't want you to know about this. Most commercial real estate brokers don't even want you to know about this, right? In fact, I'm still a commercial real estate broker, so it's nothing against that, but most of them want to keep you in the um, the 1031 shotgun wedding, right? Get engaged in 45 and a mar married in 180, and you can't blame them because that's what they get paid to do. And I still do 1031s when and if the deal makes sense, but what if it would be a cool way to have a backup plan in case your client doesn't doesn't find that 45-day 180 thing, right? What if, what if you saved a failed 1031 exchange for a client in her 70s who has a beach house that went to an Airbnb and COVID hits and her Airbnb business dries up overnight and this is the house where she raised her family in, turned it into a rental and she's in her 70s in California and she's going, this is crazy. I can't even collect rent. They're putting, putting restrictions on this. I can't even Airbnb my place. I don't want to overpay for a property. I don't want to pay when you sell it for $8 million and pay about two and a half to $3 million of tax. I just want freedom and flexibility. I don't want to retire and relax, at least for right now until I find a deal down the road. And that's why the deferred sales trust, and that's a client of mine. You can, you can learn about that story. Her son 
uh, Rick um, is a financial advisor and super skeptical, and he should be because he never heard of it before, and he'd been in the industry for 20 years. And But he, he put us through the ringer with his CPA and the due diligence and everything, and they did the deal, and he's a client of mine. And that's the type of transformation that we want to teach you as the commercial broker or business professional to be able to provide for your clients. And that's part of our vision is to train and coach and equip 100,000 business professionals within the next 10 years. So this is a household name, just like the 1031 is the household name, okay? So the hard way, this is the, what your clients have been forced to do for the past 10 years. Hire a broker, 5 or 6% of commission, sell a property, half percent closing costs, hire attorneys to review documents, $1,000, hire 1031 qualified intermediary, seven fifty. Hire an attorney to draft new LLC, $1,500. Identify three properties within 45 days and close in 180 days. They're feeling the pressure. Apply and obtain a loan. 1% origination fee and closing costs. Buy a property. Hopefully, they didn't overpay. Take on more debt than they wanted to. They're feeling more pressure. Their upfront costs can be hundreds of thousands of dollars per deal. And their time and energy and stress can be about six months just to sell the property and buy another property. As well as the post-close, they got to hire new property management, new leases, new utilities, new laws, new collections, new eviction laws. It's endless and your baby boomer clients or anyone it's not even have to be baby boomers i have a client who's 45 who just sold a 2.6 million dollar business in alabama deferred six hundred thousand of tax and he's building tax deferred 70 multifamily units in tennessee he's doing on his timing and his way not overpaying for a property that he doesn't really want to own that's too expensive in a three four and five percent cap rate market but rents are highly appreciate it and it's squeezed out of the deals it just doesn't make sense right that's why this is a better way and by the way if you're considering the delaware Stash Troy trust I want to tell you that um, it has some pros and has some cons, just like the Deferred Sales Trust has pros and cons. We have the ongoing fees. The Delaware Statutory Trust, the biggest challenge with those is the funds are not liquid. In fact, they're tied up typically for seven to 10 years, and you give up all control. You're basically entrusting it to somebody else. who They have beautiful properties, by the way, Class A properties in Class A locations, in Class A tenants, and they're typically non-recourse loans, which is good. But you're not diversified, and fees can be massive. I mean, massive fees, as much as 14% of every dollar is going is not going to real estate. It's going to the professionals that put you in the deals. And it's huge, huge, huge fees, and it can be a challenge, partly because of what's called the seven deadly sins. You can look that up on a Delaware Statutory Trust, the seven deadly sins. And basically uh, what it boils down to, one of the most important ones, is they're typically not value-add. My parents growing up in the Bay Area, they taught us to buy and build real estate and add value, right? They didn't teach us to buy turnkey deals that are completely perfect. You want to buy the dog on the street and you want to add value and you want to make a bunch of forced equity uh, appreciation. Well, part of the seven deadly sins with the Delaware Statutory Trust typically means they're not value add. They're typically very turnkey, which look great on paper and beautiful, but look at the cash flow. Is it Does it look amazing for you? I, not as great, okay? So be careful about that. And again, this has come from someone who's had clients do Delaware Statutory Trust. The other thing too is whenever you're working with somebody, make sure you're working with somebody who actually has had clients do the thing that they're doing, right? Delaware Statutory Trust, 1031 exchanges, deferred sales trust, right? Um, it's important. It's important to make sure that you're with that. So, But the positives are non-recourse loan, again, Class A, beautiful properties, first class operators. Also, you have no more management responsibilities yourself, no more leases, no more utilities, no more laws, no collections. All of that's being taken care of by somebody. I call this peaceful mailbox money. I call it sleepy real estate capital, and it's good. You can get the 5% or so on, on your money, and you can feel really good at night. Like I've had clients, by the way, do a partial Delaware statutory trust and partial deferred sales trust. It's a little bit of both. Like you don't have to pick up one or the other. In fact, she was in Colorado and she was selling her multifamily property out of Denver. And uh, her sale um, was right around 1.8. And she had about a million three in equity. And she said, you know what, Brett? I like the deferred sales trust a lot. I think I like it better than the Delaware, but there's something about it. I just want a little bit of diversification. I said, great, no problem. She goes, can I do a partial Delaware statutory trust and a partial deferred sales trust? And the answer was absolutely. So she put $300,000 into a Delaware statutory trust and she put a million into the deferred sales trust. That just made her feel great. And I said, hey, I'm all for that. If you feel good about it, let's do that. But remember the Delaware statutory trust only works for investment real estate. It doesn't work for a high-end primary home. Like the client we helped in Palo Alto, who was the number one realtor in Keller Williams for multiple years, the number one in Palo Alto for multiple years, who did about a year and a half due diligence on us and the structure and used it for his own property that he sold for $8.3 million. Okay. He could not have sold his primary home in a 1031 because he lived there, right? But at the Deferred Sales Trust, he can. So the Delaware Statutory Trust, I like to call it the Delaware 1031. That's basically what it is. It's not a Deferred Sales Trust. 
It's blockbuster way of doing things, but it does do some things really well. And one of those things, by the way, is ca called solving mortgage over basis. Mortgage over basis is when your debt is in excess of your basis. It's not deferrable with the deferred sales trust. So we do use the, the Delaware for deals that are investment real estate to defer mortgage over basis. Okay. And we, 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 uh, and that we can get into that more later, but that also is, is a, is a tool. The point is you should know the tools that are in, that are in your tool belt and then advise and help your clients make a best decision based upon those tools. Okay. So I'm going to pause there and, um, get, and then get into some deal stories, but any questions right now and how are we doing on time, Linda? Anybody, please. Think. Thank you, Jeannie. No, I appreciate that, and absolutely, I'm I'm happy to to uh, to provide as much value and education as I can, and and do that in the world, and do that with the EXP commercial. Um, yes, so with Stephanie and Jib's blessing and all of those things, I'm happy to do that. Just so you know, too, I also have a, a mastermind on Zoom every Friday that everyone's invited to, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com, and you can register for free, and you can bring on everybody. And it's like DST University. But it happens every Friday, 10 a.m. PST, 1 p.m. Eastern time, and you can register for free, but also happy to, to run that on EXP World as well. So I'm going to jump back into, um, and again, if anyone has any questions, raise your hand so I know, but otherwise I'm just going to keep going here um, and, or just dive right in. Yeah. Great question. First of all, I am a commercial real estate broker in California. I've sold over $100 million in commercial real estate. So I am a broker. Um, I think the answer is, may, oh, you're asking somebody else maybe. Is that what you're saying? You're saying anyone on on, on, on the in the thing or you're asking me? Yes. Yeah, well, I think the answer is when do you introduce the 1031 exchange, right? I, I think we're I think literally every single day I was having conversations before I knew about the deferred sales trust about the 1031 exchange. It came up in every single conversation. Are you in a 1031 exchange? Would you list the property if I found you an up leg? Um, would you do a 1031 exchange? What's your proper what's your capital gains tax? It's the number one issue for people before they sell. They're not gonna sell until they have a clear plan on an up leg or at least can feel comfortable they're gonna find a 1031 exchange in time. Um, and there's people literally who won't, won't even list and sell until you solve that problem. And so my answer became, I started to cold call everybody on this every single day. And, and I land, and when I became a believer is when I landed a meeting with a gentleman who's a billionaire who owns thousands and thousands and thousands of apartment complexes here in Northern California, who's had relationships for 30 years with, with brokers that are way smarter than me, but he met with me and he, and he, and he met with me multiple times with his family. He hasn't become a client yet. But he's he is looking at this as his exit plan for for all of his assets, and so um, the answer is your next cold call. Like, what are you waiting for? Like, if you knew about Netflix versus Blockbuster, or even thinking like this, if you knew about 1031 25 years ago and nobody knew about it, when should you have been talking about it? The next day that you knew about it, because you knew that it was the future, and the 1031 has been amazing. 
But to us, it's kind of run its course for the most part until it's a buyer's market or deals make a little more sense. And this is where the deferred sales trust comes in. So I think you got to present options. Our company is called Capital Gains Tax Solutions, plural, because we realize there's more than just one. Now, do we think we have the best one? We do, especially in today's marketplace and in, in circumstance with highly appreciated assets and the baby boomers wanting to be out and have some flexibility. Yeah. But it doesn't mean you, you don't talk about a Delaware and a, and a 1031 exchange and you, and you don't um, give them the options and let them choose, right? What I learned at Marcus Similichap was don't be the principal, be the broker. Present the best options, give your best opinion based upon what you know, and let them decide. And and the, at the end of the day, does it solve their problem? Does that make sense, Linda? Does that answer the question? Uh, they can combine, combine things. So like two, if it's two complexes at $500,000 each, they can combine it or one complex at 700, one at 300, they can combine it. But like, if it's, if it's 35 single family homes that equal one and a half million dollars, we're going to say it's, it doesn't make any sense. Right. Essentially the, the transaction costs on a per transaction basis doesn't make sense. Now, can you, if you could combine all 35 homes into one LLC and sell it to one in one escrow to one buyer, can we do that? Yeah. So that, you just get with us and, and talk about that, but it's just not for smaller deals, okay? So I'm gonna keep going on a, on a few on a few uh, deal stories here, okay? And um, so, yo, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about the Deferred Sales Trust, which is not a 1031, which is not a Delaware statutory trust. And what we call this is ex, uh, transformational exit planning for your clients. It can save a failed 1031. It works for cryptocurrency. It works for business. It works for real estate. It works for primary homes. Whereas the 1031 only works for investment real estate. It goes back 25 years, thousands of closes, billions under management. It's been tested by the IRS over a dozen times. It's perfect, literally perfect track record. But most 1031 companies don't want you to know about it. Even most brokers either don't know or have never done it. And so they're just they're just skeptical and cautious, as I was too at Marcus and Millichap back in 2009 when I learned about it. But we believe it's the it's the future, It's but it's already already has a, a proven track record for um, all things um, investment, real estate, cryptocurrency, business sales to defer capital gains tax. Does that make sense, Patrick? Okay. Yes. So just like you would invest like an IRA or 401k or your regular capital, you can invest it into stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, passive or active um, cryptocurrency. You can invest in a number of things to get a return. And that's one of the best things about the deferred sales trust is that you can diversify. You don't have to be in one single asset class or trade one seven unit apartment complex, which if you're watching online, uh, it's my client, Steve. He lives in Sacramento. He grew up in Napa and his, his family, they own about $30 million of multifamily properties. So he grew up learning about the 1031 exchange at, at his, at the dinner table. And for him, he had a $1.7 million property with his partner that they bought for about 600,000 after the crash. And he's going, oh my gosh, this is a great time to sell. But I think I want a 1031. I'm like, no problem. I'll list and sell for you with 1031. That's cool. But in case it fails, we have a backup plan. And what, what, what do you know? His, his partner, John, his wife's uh, father passed away during escrow and the whole, and during the, trying to get the 1031. So he had to bail. He had a whole, whole family emergency. And so he had Steve waiting to buy something and, and, and not having enough for the down payment. So we saved his failed 1031 exchange. We saved the partnership. And Steve, he's very skeptical. And he says, Brett, I can tell you, it, was, it wasn't easy. I had to really dig in. I'm reading a quote here, by the way. I'm on YouTube streaming this for those who are wondering. I'm also on Clubhouse for those who are on YouTube who are wondering why there's pauses during this presentation is because you can't hear what they're saying. Uh, that being said, he goes, I had to really dig in. I had to pivot and trust somebody else. I'm a very skeptical person. My wife is even more skeptical. And he used the deferred sales trust to save his failed 1031 exchange. And I also talked about the house in Palo Alto for the number one Keller Williams agent for his primary home, 8.3 million. There's another one in Colorado we closed, $5.1 million um, for a client that's worth 25 million. Baby Boomers out of California. We did some estate planning there too to help them out. Um, we also did Bitcoin and Ethereum, which I'm most excited about right now. We did a, a, a deal for a client. She worked at Google. She's in her 20s. 
and she had a dream of starting a business. She also had uh, the the uh, steel spine to buy a Bitcoin at a very low price many years ago and hold on to it. She bought it for about 50,000 and it went to $50 million. And she literally never sold because of the tax until she met us and then she sold. Now, but she didn't sell, she transferred it to the trust. She deferred the tax and now she's, she's building a business with her college roommate and she quit Google she stopped working for Google and building their dream and she's building her own dream and she's doing that all tax deferred. And so we're proud to be able to unlock that dream for her and help her to defer the tax. We also did it for another, another gentleman and his wife. He worked in the Silicon Valley and he bought Ethereum and Bitcoin and for about a hundred thousand and went to 13 million. And he just did seven and a half million with us over two transactions. Okay. And that's money. He wants to buy a cabin in Tahoe and Airbnb it out. Right and and buy and also invest in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds to get some some security and some stability in his investments, and that's what we can do. What again, a ten thirty one cannot do that, but we can do it here. Um, there's a business sale in Alabama. We did. I talked about that one already. I already talked about the one deal in um, in Santa Cruz, the seven point nine million dollar deal for the for my client in her seventies. Um, on and on and on. We 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 saved a fail ten thirty one exchange out of Georgia, seven point six million dollar deal. Dave. Um, and you can hear his story. You can go to Capital Gains Tax Solutions and watch the podcast interview. He tells his entire story about this. And he's been in the business for 30 years. And he's like, you know what, Brett? Never heard of it. He studied it for a year. COVID hits. And he's like, I'm not buying right now. Can you save my failed 1031? We saved it. He deferred the tax. He's really happy. We have a couple other clients that are multifamily syndicators. They did 36 million with us um, out of selling their multifamily properties in Nevada and Arizona. They own about 2,500 units. You can hear David's story, another David, on on my podcast. And so, all that being said, the one thing that's probably going through everyone's mind right now, and it was going through my mind too, is just Brett. This sounds amazing, but I need my trusted advisor to say yes before I move forward. I just don't understand how my CPA doesn't know about this. I don't understand how every commercial real estate broker doesn't know about this. Like what, why, why does this sound so amazing and so too good to be true? I don't get it. Right. And I want to tell you one secret to overcoming this biggest objection. I believe this is the big domino. And as soon as you get this big domino knocked over, it's going to unlock your belief to be able to go talk with confidence to help people, uh, defer the tax and use the deferred sales trust. Okay. And so, uh, this is the story. All right. And this is a gentleman, you can actually hear him on my podcast. Um, his name is David Young. And, um, is there anyone who ever heard on this, on this, uh, clubhouse, have you ever heard of a gentleman named Bill Gross? Anyone ever heard of a gentleman named Bill Gross? Maybe, maybe not. Bill Gross. Y yeah. And he, he, he's kind of like a warm, yeah, he's kind of like a, a, a Warren Buffett figure and or a, a, a Mark Cuban figure, maybe a little better, of the industry of financial advising. Like some of the like best, smartest people all look to him for, for leadership and guidance. And he's kind of a pioneer of the financial advising world, okay? A little bit different than commercial real estate world, right? But for that world, very respected. In fact, there's a group called PIMCO. You probably heard of PIMCO. Well, Bill Gross and David Young, David Young was Bill Gross's right-hand guy. And they, they ended up, like four other guys, built PIMCO, uh, 20 years ago from about 80 billion to 1.2 trillion all around the world. They managed money for some of the largest endowments, sovereign wealth, pension funds, very respected people. Okay. And they all retire like, like, like 16 years ago, they all retire. They get a big payday from PIMCO. Four of the five guys get bored. David Young and about four others get bored and they form a group called Anfield Capital out of Southern California. And if you can imagine these guys that are on top of their game, uh, very respected. They get approached with a lot of people wanting to sell their tax deferral strategy, wanting to sell their whatever to their clients. And likewise, they got approached about three and a half years ago with the deferred sales trust. And so they looked at it and they looked at it and they didn't look at it for two days or two weeks or two months. They looked at it for two years. They did a two year due diligence on the structure, on the, the clients, the banks, the financial advisors, the legal framework, their legal team looked at it, their CPAs, exhaustive due diligence on the co-founders. Okay. My business partners exhaustive. And they flew back and they sat down with the, the tax attorneys on a big whiteboard and they mapped everything out with their whole tax team. And, and they came back, came through with two conclusions. Number one, the person who created this is the smartest person we've ever met. Okay. And that's saying a lot, right? Cause they, they're really smart people. Number two, we are all in we will become a part of the Deferred Sales Trust Inner Circle Advisory Team, and we will manage money for Deferred Sales Trust clients, and we will roll it out to our clients, okay? 
and so I, I say this with everybody, okay? And so if it's good enough for David Young and his legal team, all of his 30 years of experience, managing money for some of the biggest wealth in the world, who ran with Bill Gross for so many years and gets approached a lot from a lot of people and does a two-year due diligence on this, is it good enough for you and your client's legal team? And you can hear David's talk and this entire thing on my, on my, on my podcast, uh, YouTube channel. Just search David Young, Capital Gains Tax Solutions, and or overcoming um, false beliefs of the deferred sale trust. And he tells his entire story. And it's remarkable. And you don't have to just take my word for it, who's a humble commercial real estate broker who, who happened to learn about the deferred sales trust 10 years ago and fall in love with it and become an expert in it. You can listen to people who've been, a, who've been looking at things for 30 years and are at the top of their game. And so I'm going to ask the question to Linda, and even to Stephanie, if you're there, or anyone else who wants to chime in here. If it's good enough for David Young and his legal team, is it good enough for you? Yeah, so that leads into the second deal story, and I, I appreciate that, Linda. You're right. It's still it's still maybe not enough. So I'm gonna give you one more, and hopefully this will put you over the top here. Let's see. And this is for a gentleman, and his name is Cal Garvin. Okay, and uh, Cal he worked for a group called LPL, which is one of the top independent financial advisor uh, companies in in the U.S. And he was one of the top top financial advisors for 35 years, and he wanted to sell his business. And his business is worth you know, multi-millions of dollars and he's in California and he's he wants to retire and move to the Midwest. And, and uh, you know, life's going fine. He doesn't need to sell his business, but um, he liked to move out a little bit earlier. And this is about 15 years ago. And he gets approached with the uh, with the deferred sales trust and, and he's skeptical because he goes, Brett, I thought it was too good to be true. And I said, well, why Cal? He goes, well, I've been in business for 35 years. We get approached with all kinds of stuff that's crazy. And we just say no to all of it. I said, okay, well, what was different here? He goes, well, I actually had an ace in my pocket. And I said, what's that, Cal? He goes, well, my wife. I go, well, tell me about your wife. He goes, well, she's much smarter than me. In fact, she's a treasury attorney for the Secretary of Treasury. And she's, um, you know, she actually was at, at times fighting or finding things that people shouldn't be doing tax-wise. And let's just say she, she was one of the top attorneys with the Tr Secretary of Treasury, like a G4 attorney, top. And so I brought her home one day. I said, hey, honey, I, I'm happy to work. I'm happy to work for another 10 years. Like we have to hit a certain number and it take me 10 years, you know, and after tax, we can get to the same number today if we were to use the deferred sales trust. But if the deferred sales trust isn't legal, doesn't look good, you're not comfortable with it, I won't do it. But here's all the paperwork. Would you please do some research on this with the, with, with, with the, with, the, with, the, uh, with whoever you can talk with or connect with and find out about? And he goes, Brett, this is what happened. Two days later, she comes home. And often anyone has seen that show called Suits. Anyone seen the show called Suits? And Suits, there's this like Harvey Specter and there's like Mike, who's like the, the junior. And they do the, all these big deals and they're big attorneys. And, and they always walk in and like the, and like the, they have a big stack of paper and they just throw it on the table. Like it's like the big thing, you know, it's like, oh, he proved you wrong. They throw it on the table. He goes, but Brett, it was like a movie. She comes walking home. I mean, she comes walking to the door, right? And I'm at my desk and she walks in and she has a stack of papers and it was like slow motion, Brett. She like, she like put, you know, she kind of like threw them on the table and she said two words that changed our lives, changed my life. She said, she says, Cal, it's legit. And he goes, Brett, that's all you need to hear. I went from too good to be true to not sure it's legal to 100% all in. We sold our business, my business within the next uh, like 60 days. We moved out of California and that was over 14 years ago, Brett. And I said, Cal, would you come on my podcast and tell the story? He goes, Brad, I don't go on podcasts, but anyone who wants who wants to talk to me, I'll tell them my story. He goes, but this is what I want you to tell them before they call me. I want you to tell them this. Brett, do you think my wife and I, who her 20 years working with Secretary of Treasury, G, G, like G4 attorney, like top, top, me 35 years in the business, in our retirement, and our legacy, do you think we would go into something that we didn't feel was 100% legal and legit if we felt like it was it was off? 
And I said, Cal, that's really, really powerful. I don't think you would. And he goes, just tell them that before they call me, but I'm happy to tell that story. So Linda, I asked you a second time, right? Knowing that now, and if you know, imagine you get a chance to talk to Cal, right? Do you see any reason why you wouldn't say, Brett, oh my gosh, this thing actually is legit. It's actually legal. If it's good enough for Cal Garvin and his wife who worked for 20 years with the secretary of treasury as an attorney, is it good enough for you, Linda? What do you think? Sure. So clients can take the money and receive the money and pay the tax as they receive it. Like it'd be the same question, like what's the exit plan for your IRA or your 1031, right? Um, however, the 1031 still does have what's called a stepped up basis. So that is pretty cool where you can die. And it's unfortunate that you have to die to get rid of the tax as it stands right now. But in a 1031 exchange with a stepped up basis, your kids can inherit a state tax free. With the deferred sales trust, you can keep it passing on. Your kids can step into your shoes, all tax deferred and keep it going. Or you just slowly pay tax along the way. Um, but most of our clients will keep the principal intact and let's live off the interest payments. They'll pay ordinary income tax on the interest payments. If they dip into principal, they'll pay capital gains tax. So it's it's flexible um, on how you receive it, but those are things that we'll work through with your CPA and everything else, okay? IRC 453. IRC 453 is a seller carryback, Linda. Have you ever done a seller carryback? Or you know when a seller just carries paper and they carry paper for the buyer and they become the lender? Have you heard of that before? Yeah, you got it. So the, the only difference is we're forming a trust and you're gonna you're gonna lend it to the trust. Instead of lending it to the ultimate buyer, you're just lending the funds to the trust. So you literally sell the asset to the trust in exchange for a promise. You know, you do a hundred percent seller carryback and the trust turns around and sells it to the buyer. And in fact, that's if you're looking on the screen here, I'm gonna to go to that next page here where it shows a breakdown of the assets to sell. So there's assets to sell in one box on the left. There's the buyer on the far right, but right in between is the trust. And what the trust is gonna do, you're gonna sell the asset to a third party trust and the trustee is my company, right? And in exchange for a promissory note to pay you back over time. So you received zero down payment and you carried back Linda 100% of the, of the money, okay? Now the cash buyer puts that exact amount, let's say the deal was a $5 million deal and they buy it all cash or they get a, they get a loan, doesn't really matter, but they actually buy it from the trust. So the smoke clears and the funds are sitting in the trust and we've done it all for fair market value. Everything's commercially reasonable. There's all this business purpose here, okay? And they take the property and they're gone. And so instead of you having to carry back Linda for the cash buyer who you might have to foreclose on where your funds are not diversified, your funds are not liquid, you can't go buy more real estate deals, right? You can't increase the cash flow per se. And they probably are going to pay you back in three to five years anyways. And you're just going to pay the tax. Instead of doing all of that, we can go for every 10 years, for 10 years, for 10 years, and renew, 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 keep this thing going, invest into real estate if and when we find a deal diversify, have liquidity. I mean, that's why it's Netflix versus the traditional installment sale. Does that make sense, Linda? So we're... Yeah, I think I caught most of that, Patrick. You're, you're asking um, what's in it for me as a broker, right? As a commercial real estate broker, we believe this organically will help you. No, but it's the reality, right? I mean, I was at Marcus and Millchap and, I, and, and I'm a EXP commercial right now. And it's the spirit of it, but it's also the reality. And this is where, this is also why a lot, you're going to notice that 1031 exchange companies are not talking about the deferred sales trust. Now we do work with those who give the backup plan. So I don't, I don't, I don't mean to make it sound like you're asking a bad question. I think it's a great question, but the reality is um, we pay referral fees is really the answer to your question. Okay. So we do pay referral fees, but the reality is we never lead with that. We always lead with, this is going to help you win more listings and do more deals because there's sellers who want to list as soon as you solve this problem. In fact, I have a $2.6 million multifamily property right now um, in Placerville, California, um, 15 units. We're going to get an all-time record high. We're in contract right now with a 1031 buyer. They would not have listed 
and sold the property if it wasn't for the deferred sales trust. So I would always, I would always say, Patrick, you're getting that first commission. Okay. Now, now you also have a shot to get the 1031 commission, but guess what? You may not be able to get it if you don't find a deal. Now you have a backup plan. So to me, it's, it's, uh, it's a to me it's the fiduciary um you know just like you're telling about a delaware statutory trust to me as a broker we've got to be telling about the deferred sales trust we've got to know about that you'll get a you'll get a smaller commission like we don't get paid as much right we're not getting five or six percent commissions or two and a half on the buy side right so it is smaller amount we'll pay the referral fee we're happy to do that but honestly it should win you more deals it should unlock new deals it should win you new clients because when you bring netflix to the table for people who are just doing blockbuster here's another one too we can move funds outside the taxable estate so for that deal we did in colorado for the 5.1 million dollar multifamily sale we moved that funds outside the taxable estate which saved them 40 percent okay 40 percent whereas the stepped up basis doesn't move it outside the taxable estate with the 1031 we can do that with the deferred sales trust okay so all of these things are a part of that and so hopefully that answers the question guys i'm actually i'm literally already going to be a minute late here on my next podcast so linda i want to thank you for having me on i want to encourage everyone to go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com i'm going to jump off i'm happy to come back on at a later date and everyone was wonderful great questions and patrick please also connect with me offline i'd love to to chat with you more or anyone else that wants to connect more and um or talk about exp commercial or the deferred sales trust just go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com check out our mastermind and our ebook there and I, and I look forward to connect with everyone in the future okay thanks everybody bye now